Also keeping our eye on question period, it is now getting underway. Let's go there and see Andrew Shear for the Conservatives starting things off today from Ottawa. It was another failure for the Prime Minister. Canadians were disciplined. Canadians became shareholders of Trans Mountain to the tune of 4.5 billion. And now we learn that more money went to some very generous bonuses for Kinder Morgan execs. Can the Prime Minister tell us whether he knew that Canadians' money was going to be used in this fashion? And if so, why does he find that acceptable? The Right Honourable Prime Minister. Mr. Speaker, we've protected thousands of jobs in Alberta and across the country. And after visiting workers in Fort McMurray, I told them that their government was standing behind them. And since the very outset, this government has supported thousands of workers working in the oil patch and the energy sector. And we will continue to endeavor to protect Canadian jobs. We will not comment on the internal decisions of a company a private company has killed thousands of jobs in the energy sector by killing Northern Gateway and cancelling Energy East. And last week, he announced that he's forcing Canadians to pay $4.5 billion for his failure to get Trans Mountain built. Now, it's bad enough that the Prime Minister is sending taxpayers' money to Texas to be invested in American projects, but now we learn that he's paying two executives over $3 million in bonuses. Why is it that every time the Prime Minister bails out a big company, executives get paid off. Right on, Prime Minister. Mr. Speaker, for 10 years, the Conservatives tried and failed to get our resources, oil resources, to markets other than the United States. Uh, they couldn't get it done. Uh, we've actually moved forward in securing uh, a pipeline to new markets across the Pacific, something they were unable to do. Uh, and yes, Mr. Speaker, I know it's a, a shock to the Conservatives, but public investment has often been part of developing our natural resources going back decades. They, however, are trapped on their ideology and continue to play politics with thousands of good jobs for Alberta. The Leader of the Opposition. Mr. Speaker, last week, Conservatives supported the government in opposition to unacceptable tariffs levied against Canadian steel and aluminum workers. And we supported the government's efforts to retaliate against this unilateral decision by the United States. However, while the U.S. tariffs came into a force immediately last Thursday, Canadian tariffs won't come into effect until July 1st. Why? Right Honourable Prime Minister. Mr. Speaker, I've said from the very beginning, it's one of the strengths of Canada that on an issue as important uh, as uh, dealing with the Canada-U.S. relationship, uh, Canadians have been broadly united on that, and I know that has made a difference uh, in our ability to engage firmly and strongly with the United States. Uh, on the question of the tariffs, we think it's important that before we bring in tariffs uh, that we consult with Canadians, that we make sure that what we're doing are uh, the right things for Canadians, because uh, we know these American motions are going to uh, hurt, uh, uh, hurt workers in the United States. We wouldn't want our decisions uh, to hurt workers in Canada. The Honourable Leader of the Opposition. Mr. Speaker, the workers in Canada are being affected right away. The threat to jobs in the Canadian economy is happening in real time. Right. The American effects, the American tariffs went into effect immediately, and Canadian shipments of steel are already being turned back from the border. So why is the Prime Minister waiting three weeks to impose these countermeasures, specifically on steel and aluminum, when the U.S. tariffs came into effect right away? Right Honourable Prime Minister. Mr. President, uh, Mr. Speaker, one of the fundamental realities is that nobody wins in trade wars. Uh, we are continuing to impress upon our American partners and American citizens to understand that we do not want to harm jobs in the United States. We do not want to see job losses in Canada. We continue to believe uh, that by working thoughtfully and, and firmly with the American administration, uh, we're going to be able to move forward in a positive direction. Uh, that's what we're continuing to do. In the meantime, we will consult uh, with Canadians on this important uh, retaliatory, uh, retaliatory measure. The Leader of the Opposition. Mr. Speaker, Iran's Supreme Leader Ali Khamenei tweeted that, quote, Israel is a malignant cancer tumor in the West Asian region that has to be removed 
and eradicate it. This is nothing less than an incitement to genocide, and Conservatives condemn it in the strongest possible language. The Iranian regime is a state sponsor of terror that supports Hamas. This is another reason why it is important for Canada to stand with Israel when they come under attack. Yeah. But this also highlights the fact that Canada cannot tolerate this hatred. Will the Prime Minister commit now to ending all efforts to normalize relations with Iran? Yeah. Yeah. Right on over, Prime Minister. Mr. Speaker, the position by Iran is unacceptable, and our position on Iran is clear. We oppose Iran's support for terrorist organizations, its threats towards Israel, its ballistic missile program, and its support for the Assad regime. Canada is a steadfast friend of Israel and a friend to the Palestinian people. We are committed to the goal of a comprehensive, just, and lasting peace in the Middle East, including the creation of a Palestinian state living side by side in peace and security with Israel. We continue to support the building of conditions necessary for both parties to find a solution. Mr. Speaker, two Kinder Morgan execs must be having a good laugh today. The two senior execs responsible for TMX will each pocket a $1.5 million bonus. That's $3 million just in bonuses. It's completely ridiculous. This Prime Minister is reneging on his promise to cut subsidies to the oil patch and once again letting the rich get richer. Mr. Speaker, does the Prime Minister think there's nothing strange about these bonuses? I must remind the member to always address her comments through the chair. The Right Honourable Prime Minister. Mr. Uh, speaker, $15 billion a year. That's what we're losing currently by uh, having no other markets than the U.S. for our oil experts. And in, the, in recent days, we've seen how important it is to have access to new markets through reliable means like pipelines, which will be approved through a process where there's been heightened consultation with Indigenous people and assessments and so on. And we will continue to make investments in the na national interest. That's what we're doing. Mr. Speaker, for a government that claims relations with First Nations are the most important relations, forcing the purchase of, an, of a pipeline to make sure it gets built over a strong and growing opposition from Indigenous communities should be embarrassing. Does the government think expanding a pipeline at all costs through a defective process respects the UN Declaration on the Rights of Indigenous Peoples? The Right Honourable Prime Minister. Mr. Speaker, we fully support the UN Declaration on the Rights of Indigenous Peoples, and we will continue to work in partnership with them. What we'll be doing on this side of the House is listening to all voices and not refusing to listen to those who don't say what we want to hear. We are listening to both sides of the coin. It would be good if all parties here in the House did that. So we're listening to those who are fiercely opposed to the pipeline, but we're also listening to those who see that that could be advantageous for their economy and for their community, and that's what people expect us to do. I'm shocked that the government has today chosen to completely disregard its obligation under the UN Declaration on the Rights of Indigenous Peoples. Last week, the the Prime Minister voted in favour of developing a recognition and implementation of rights framework in partnership with Indigenous peoples. Five days later, he has failed his first test. Does the Prime Minister understand that respecting the rights of First Nations, Métis and Inuit peoples means respecting even those who do not agree with him? And to the Prime Minister, do not tell me I don't understand. Very good. Honourable Prime Minister. Mr. Speaker, I respectfully suggest that indeed during consultations and listening and working to uh, build reconciliation with Indigenous peoples means uh, listening to all voices of the Indigenous community, including those who disagree with us. Uh, we have a tremendous depth of respect for all Indigenous voices, uh, those who oppose the pipeline and those who wish the pipeline to move forward. And it is working with them to allay fears and create opportunities that all Canadians expect of this government on the path to reconciliation.
Hello. Member for Skeena Bulkley Valley. Canadians were stunned to watch this climate fighting Prime Minister promise to end fossil fuel subsidies oh, yeah. and then go out and buy himself a used pipeline, a 65 year old pipeline with our money. And these geniuses paid eight times the price that was bought for just a few years ago. Adding insult to injury to this public bailout, it includes a $3 million bonus to Kinder Morgan executives. Sorry, not sorry isn't going to cut it this time. So will Liberals come clean and table the deal on the Kinder Morgan bailout so all Canadians can see just how they ripped us off? The right honourable Prime Minister. Mr. Speaker, $15 billion a year. That's what it costs us that we can't export our oil resources to markets other than the United States. Now, the Conservatives, who pretended they were great friends of the oil industry, weren't able to achieve that in 10 years of trying, and we are now able to secure a pipeline that gets our new resource, our oil resources, to new markets. On top of that, Mr. Speaker, it goes within a pan-Canadian framework on climate change that includes a national price on carbon pollution right across the country that includes a historic oceans protection plan. Honorable member for Megan Ciclerable. Mr. Speaker, the Canadian farmer is up against a two-faced Liberal government that tells one and all it's defending supply management while at the same time... All right, so we were listening to question period on this Monday. Lots of feisty back and forth over the Trudeau government's decision to buy the Kinder Morgan Trans Mountain Pipeline between Alberta and British Columbia for $4.5 billion. We'll keep our eye on what's going on in Ottawa. I'll bring you all the updates right here on News Channel.